Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here and this is going to be week number 4 of the UBL and we are up against JV and his Atlanta Victinis. Now this is going to be a really really fun week. I've known Jay for a little while now and he's fun to talk to and just watch play. But uh, we never actually battled before so this is going to be a first here and it's going to be a really wild matchup because I kind of feel like I had to build a little bit risky here but it just felt kind of necessary against his kind of team composition. And this is actually going to be our second time going through this because we did have some lane issues the first time. We'll be going in again pretty much same leads and i think um we, we just sent out our leads and kind of dc so we're on another server and we're going to try this again so i'm going to go through the team preview moderately quickly because we do already kind of see his team a little bit we will see the zero aura haxorus blacephalon corviknight serena and the double now i this is pretty much exactly what i expected to see except i really expected to see the clefable instead of the double that really really surprised me but i told myself you know when i was eating chipotle like, before this match that my go-to lead is just has to be my rotom it feels like it has the best matchup against this entire team and I think it just does the most to his to, to everything that he would want to do here. He does have a lot of, you know, counterplay to it. Obviously, a banded Haxorus that can just Earthquake through my team is really, really scary. It's really not something that I deal with terribly well. And like I said, this is going to be a really risky build. But I'm going to let the timer go down again just so I can kind of think through the matchup just a little bit more. Obviously, Rotom feels like somewhat of a key to winning this because it matches up really well against everything that's not Serena, right? And assuming I can keep it healthy enough to take a hit from the Blacephalon, foul play should always KO back in return, even if it's timid, I believe. The Haxorus, it just kind of prevents the Haxorus from setting up. The Zero Aura, we have to play carefully. Now, spoiler alert, he does lead off with the Zero Aura. So I'm still trying to think through kind of what to do against that. And it's a matchup that I think ultimately I do well against, but not that well against, right? It's just kind of something that I have to think through a decent amount here. Uh, I do have a lot of things for the Zero Aura, um, and maybe it's best not to get knocked off turn one by the Zero Aura, but at the same time, in the name of trying to prevent a sub, it feels kind of strong here. I wouldn't be surprised that much, I suppose, to see a to see a special zero aura i've seen him bring his special zero aura in the past and grass now could be strong here just for the just for the sand slash um and i know foul play should always be able to break a sub and which is my biggest concern at the moment but i think i will just go with my initial play of will -O -Wisp. does go for a bolt switch so this will be a special zero aura probably but even if the serena wants to come in getting a willow off on it this early on off of the match seems huge and the fact that I stayed in could make him believe that I want to go for a Hydro Pump, which was honestly a, an, an, a, another possibly strong play here. But we will get the Will-O-Wisp off, and this does give him a reasonably free U-turn. Now, I should outspeed, assuming this is a defensive one. Um, it seems moderately likely that this thing would be somewhat defensive. But I think here... I don't know. I don't know how much I should risk outspeeding this Serena. Excuse me, for a little bit of chip damage. I really do just want to go out into my Duraludon, but I also don't... You know what? I think he clicks U-turn. I think, I think worst case scenario, he clicks U-turn, and I just click Volt Switch in return. I'd be very... Yeah, and we do outspeed either way. We do outspeed either way. So this is a very defensive Serena. And regardless, I think I go out into the Duraludon. Uh, or do I? I think Duraludon is reasonably strong here. Duraludon is reasonably strong here. Uh, Duraludon gives me rocks. Yeah, I think I do this. I think I do this. But let me see here. Let me see. Against... Excuse me does knock off my Draldon, which is not going to be the worst thing in the world. Um, especially with how much, you know, damage is kind of going to rack up here. I think getting up rocks is really strong for me. Uh, Corviknight is going to be his go-to removal, I think. I actually don't know what he would want to switch into this thing. I don't... It, oh, and I did reveal my Chobbleberry, but I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world at the moment. I think Duraludon's honestly my most expendable member. It's really kind of as meant as a backup kind of check to the Corviknight, but we do get rocks up and we will kind of threaten this Corviknight a little bit. 
And I am very, very curious, especially if we kind of force this Corviknight to defog. That'll be very interesting to me, but I want to dial in Thunderbolt quickly here. And see just kind of what damage we're doing here. Duraladon does do over half uh, as he goes for the defog, which is totally, totally fine. Uh, I do lose my top barrier, which is which again is not ideal, but I think I just get rocks up again. I think I just get rocks up again. You could go into Zero Aura for sure, for sure. But I think that's not my biggest concern at the moment. I think that's not my biggest concern at the moment. And that pretty much I think that should reveal like a pretty physically defensive Corviknight. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, that damage output is Pretty much right in line with a with a no special defense Corviknight. Or not very specially defensive Corviknight, I should say. It could have some kind of mixed defenses, I suppose. Um, which obviously could make me fear bulk up or some kind of crazy stuff like that. But the fact that I was able to two hit and I have an opportunity to get rocks back up feels big to me. Now, it could go hit me back with a body press. But that, at the moment, is kind of the least of my concerns. It does send the Zero Aura back out, which is exactly what I expected. Yeah, yeah, that is what I was playing for here. And I feel like this is a moment where I can give this up to, to drop some... To drop a Draco, drop, to get some damage in. Um, let's go for the close combat. Oof. Okay, so we... So, this has to be... Yeah, this has to be very mixed... Or no, this is straight-up offensive, because I think I ran some counts earlier, and I think we should we should be able to reasonably take it as long as it's not, like, super-duper offensive like this. So, how do I play this? How do I play this? I think I go out... Uh, I could go out into... I could go out into this. Yeah, this makes the most sense to me. This makes the most sense to me. Uh, this could invite in this arena, and in which case that would be not ideal. But... I could knock off. I could knock off. Or I could super fang. I don't know. This one's a little bit of a tough call. I think the Corviknight comes in. I think the Corviknight comes in and I knock off the Corviknight. Do we see the Corviknight? We do see the Corviknight. Okay. Okay. And we'll be able to get the rocks and the knockoff off. And I think our best play is always just going to be to... To, um... Get spikes up. Because I could honestly do this most mostly all day. I think spikes are going to be super duper important here. And I think I think next turn I probably click Super Fang. So that I could go for a knock a knockoff or, or I could put myself in a position that knock off uh KOs on the following turn. Uh it does yeah. It also guards against potential switches. Um, this thing could also su be super helpful against the Zero Aura, so I shouldn't kind of be too, too careless with this thing. But at the same time... At the same time, uh, I do feel like... This Corviknight... I'm putting this Corviknight in a good position... I'm putting myself in a good position against this Corviknight, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but let's see here. There's more spikes. And I think I just do it again. I think he roosts up again. No, maybe he doesn't. He does seem to be very serious about defogging here. I think if anything... I think if anything... I do this one more time and I go out into my Rotom. I think I go out into Rotom now. And I think Rotom's gonna let me get off a Willow. I think Rotom's gonna let me get off a Willow. Because, yeah, I think I think that's always gonna be my, my best play here. This is this is kind of the, the, the interactions that I was expecting to have, right? Because, with the Will-O-Wisp, because I, I was really struggling for a fourth move. 
and uh, th this is the exact situation where where locking myself into a move when zero aura is potentially in, in the back is always going to be you know kind of scary and this is the exact scenario that i imagined myself being in when i threw on will-o-wisp because it because it really manages his entire team decently well could go out into the the serena again and i should check to see what kind of What kind of damage foul play should do to a Serena? It's not doing much. It's definitely not doing much. Uh, so, yeah, just thinking through this, it's always going to be tough. I think... Oh, I don't know what that is at all. It's the hack service. Okay. Okay. Now, this also lets me get a foul play off on this as well. Haxorus. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Foul play should be just about a two hit, especially with the burn chip. But I think I'm going to click Volt Switch either way. It goes for the Dragon Dance straight up, which is bold. Because I definitely could have clicked foul play there. And I think, yeah, I think regardless, I go out into, into this thing. Or I could make this play. I mean, how strong does this play feel? Haxor is burned minus one. I also don't know what item it is. It could be life orbed. That's concerning. But burned close combat against Celesteela. Man, this really does feel like a strong play here. But I also really want to... I don't know, what kind of damage is Victini doing? Yeah, Victini should also pick it up. So I'm going to go with Victini here. Uh, I don't know. I'm. Oh, we actually don't pick this up. But it's fine because I can U-turn out here and we should be okay. Um, I, I kind of panicked. I think Celesteela is still a really strong play for me. But yeah, I, I honestly just think I panicked. I honestly just think I panicked. And this is going to reveal Scarf, which is not ideal, but like I said, I just panicked. Celsiela could have been a really strong play, although he could click Earthquake here. Yeah, or I don't know, would he? Yeah, yeah I think this is fine. He either clicks, he either clicks Earthquake, Dragon Dance, and I guess maybe Dragon Claw, and this should cover every play. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think it's that bad of a call. Just try to go for the Autotomize here. Hey everyone, this is me a couple days later, and I just wanted to spare you guys a couple minutes of me just saying to myself over and over again that this is a bad play, because I go through a couple lines in my head that really don't make a ton of sense in retrospect, because I kind of realized as soon as I made the play that there was really no reason for me to click Autotomize. I definitely do think I kind of panicked in that moment, because I built the Celesteela assuming that Jay wouldn't bring a really offensive banded zero aura so this felt like really my only opportunity to get any value out of Celesteela if i was able to optimize before he ever brings in the zero aura but like i said it just it never really makes sense it's because i do clock in this sequence that the Placephalon is very, very likely to be scarfed given the team composition. So this autonomize just never really makes as much sense. And I just want to acknowledge that if I really wanted to kind of take advantage of this moment, the much better play would have been to take advantage of the very, very obvious close combat, go back into Victini, and then either U-Turners and Headbutt, depending on kind of damage this Haxorus ends up at. And I end up with a full HP Celesteela still and minimal damage onto my Victini for this Haxorus, and it just puts me in a much, much better position if I just make those types of plays instead of anything that I do in the sequence. Yeah, but at least I know that this thing is Scarfed, which doesn't mean that 
which does mean that Porygon is a potential kind of always switch into this. And it's a play that I'm going to make right now. Foul play always KOs here. Um, Zero Aura is a pretty obvious kind of switch in front to want to make. And I think Teleport's the obvious play that I have to make. I think Teleport's the obvious play that I have to make. That is so embarrassing. That I can't believe how embarrassing that play was. That's that's just uh, that's just an atrociously bad play. I don't know what I was thinking, but it does bring in the core of night. It does bring in the core of night. This will allow in the Rotom. I mean, honestly, it, it also. Let me just see. Cor a max defense Corviknight. I'm doing. I must be doing terrible. Impact. Um, but a physically defensive Corviknight, even even physically defensive against against Victini, is not ideal. Uh, what does that invite in though? I don't think. Yeah, I think whatever this invites in, I think I can manage. I mean, I mean, to, to be completely honest, I think the only thing that this would invite in that kind of just completely messes me up would be the would be the the Haxorus. And now that the Haxorus is down, I think it opens up my team a huge, huge amount because I do think my team has the proper kind of switch ins to whatever he wants to do. And I think just a Mon has to go down here, right? Um, Blacephalon would be the obvious exception, but Blacephalon is such a difficult call to make when, when my Porygon's in the back, right? And my Porygon just gives me so much momentum here. But I think the Haxorus could just let the, the Serena go down. Could let the double go down. Yeah, it does let the Serena go down, which is totally fair. Um, which does open up my Rotom quite a bit. But we, we will finally just get a V create KO. Um, I think it just invites in the, the Blacephalon. And if the Blacephalon comes in, then I bring in the Porygon. And I just teleport again. I think it's the play that I always make. I think it's the play that I always make. I could bring in the Zero Aura. The Zero Aura just lets me go into Sand Slash. Uh, never brings in Corviknight. Never brings in double, really. I mean, he could bring in double. Is it possible for double to take a hit? But then what does double do in return? Right? I don't even know what double's other ability is. Is it double? It is double. What is double's other ability? Like, I, I, I just realized that I genuinely don't know. Steadfast and bulletproof. Uh, I don't KO here, and I think he knows that, right? So I think I just go for another Willow. I think I just make the play for another Willow. But I have to, I have to get a lot of chip onto this double for V Create to kind of do what I need to do. Because there, there's a Cotton Guard, but. But I can burn it, and, and burning it is always going to put me in an interesting position here. And then... And then we just kind of try to go from there. Against Rotom Wash. This thing's up. Well, we'll I guess we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Hydro Pump should be a 2KO. I think it's just a play that I make regardless. I think it's just a play that I make regardless, unless there's a better one here. I could go out into Sand Slash. I 
Yeah, but I think I just take the free chip, right? I'm doing... Well, we're both not doing great on time. Um, Hydro Pump is still a really strong play regardless. And I think I take it. Because if he con guards again, then... Again, this is a 2KO. Should be. Yeah, okay. And by him con guarding again, it gets, uh, it gets me up to full. For reasonably free. He no longer has to switch into Hydro Pump anymore. So this thing has to go down, and, and it just opens up my Victini again. It just opens up my Victini again. Man, sell Steel, I dude. How did I play that so badly? Uh, can we land another one? I mean, we have to land another one, right? There's, there's no other play to be made here. But just thinking through this... Just thinking through this... Once a double goes down, v Kree can probably just KO Zero Aura for me. But can it? I mean, I'm now now I'm very curious. Um. Oh, goes for rest. Okay, that's fair. Wait, did I miss or did I just not pick up the KO? I completely missed that. Did I miss or just not pick up the KO? Uh, I think I Volt Switch here. Do I, though? Yes. I think I Volt Switch. In order to... Well, no, I, 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 I probably should have just played the, played the odds with, with sleep, with sleep talk turns. Cause yeah, this could make me soft to the zero aura in a way that I don't like. Did I miss or, did I miss the attack or did I miss out on the KO altogether? Hey everyone, I'm back for just a second, because again, I just wanted to spare everybody some really not great lines that I go through in my head, but I just want to acknowledge that obviously the best line in the situation would have just been to stay in with Rotom, try for two Hydro Pumps and two Lucky Sleep Talk turns, and truthfully, even if I get hit once or maybe twice, I think I can take it and kind of deal with it as long as I land two Hydro Pumps, but I just need to acknowledge that there's literally no reason for me to want to go into this sand slash in this moment, other than once again, just panic in the moment that I just really didn't know to deal with yeah okay i think i i, I click will wish no matter what um i think that was another misplay I, man I'm, I'm i really don't like the way that i've been playing this game i i i had so many thoughts about this match going into it and i think they're all kind of jumbling in my brain and i'm not really you know playing the way that i think i should be and it's really just messing with me there's just so many yeah yeah just go straight for the rest which is totally fair and i just have to get lucky on the sleep the sleep talk turns and I think we get there I think we get there because man this is so disappointing I haven't playing this but if I get two two hydro pump hits in, in a row on some not great sleep talk turns then we get out of here safely Oh, I'm, I'm, I, might, I might have to hit three in a row, actually. That's not great. Okay, okay. This is stressful, but... This is kind of how this has to go. This is how this has to go. And truthfully... He could also try to be making me try to run out of Hydro Bombs as well. That is also very concerning. But. Yeah, there was no excuse for me giving up my my Sand Slash like that. Can we get lucky? Can we get lucky again? And now also, yeah, okay, we get lucky again. And now also, it does look like Volt Switch should be able to pick up a KO. I think Volt Switch should always pick up a KO. And it allows in my Victini. Which I think is just really strong here. 
I think it's actually... Oh. Here's another case of a not great... Well, no. I, sh I should still always pick up the KO. If I don't, then... Chalk it up to my many, many misplays that, are, that put putting myself in this position to kind of... Just... Throw this game away, but... Uh... I think... Yeah, okay. I think this just lets me get in the Victini, and the only counterplay he has against the Victini is going to be the, the Blacephalon. And, um, I think it's definitely possible for this Blacephalon to to want to scarf itself into into knockoff, specifically for the Porygon, but I don't believe that he would have brought that in prep. But I don't know. He, could, absolutely, he absolutely could have. And if he does, then what can I really say to that, right? If he, if he scars himself in a knockoff, specifically for the Porygon, then that is just... What am I going to do? Does bring this thing in. Uh, but we just have to hit this thing, right? We just have to hit this thing. Um, and honestly, even if I do get knocked off, it doesn't, it doesn't honestly really change much about what this matchup looks like, right? Because... Yeah, okay, we just pick up the KO. That was a crit. Oh, I really hope that crit didn't matter, but who knows. But that does really help me out a lot because it means that giving up the Sand Slash isn't as big a deal as before. Now, we were capable of KOing a Zero Aura. I saw I saw we were capable of KOing like a No Bug Zero Aura, but this thing could have a very decent amount of, H, uh, of HP investment. If this thing was max HP. Well, if, if it was max HP, then we never KO. So I guess it comes down to a lot, right? If it was, yeah, that crit actually might have may have mattered, but who knows? I guess we will just have to see. I guess we'll just have to see on another day. But with this board state, I think we do have the tools that we have to that we need to win. Um, I, I do switch out first, which is a good sign here. I don't think this gets any like crazy, crazy. It does have Scarf knockoff. That's that's huge. That's that's actually ge that's genuinely really cool. But I think here we click teleport. Foul play would KO this thing, but we can teleport out into Victini. Yeah, we always teleport out into Victini, right? And now. But yeah, I guess I was 100% wrong about him not be willing to bring a uh, Scarf knockoff. But if if we... Or this thing could not be Scarf. I mean, no, I think it, I think it has to be Scarf, right? Yeah, yeah, we do get another... Okay. Okay. This will allow us to go into this thing. And Foul Play should always KO, I think. Foul play should always KO. And if he goes into the into the into the other thing, then I always just volt switch out on the next turn. And I do think we think that this thing is max defensive, which means that Which means that Volt Switch should be doing a large chunk here. But I do think we get there in the end. Despite some truly embarrassing plays that happened. We do not pick up the KO. Is, is that a roost here? We, we won't know. I can go out into the duck. No, I know. I always have to make this play. I have to have to make this play. I have to have to make this play. Uh, goes for the body press, which is fine. And then two bolt strikes... Or actually, actually no. Bolt Strike doesn't pick up the KO. Uh, nothing that I have picks up a KO onto Blacephalon. But but nothing. But Blacephalon can't can't lock itself in anything that. Uh, Blacephalon can't lock itself into any move that KOs both Victini and Porygon. So, 
So, I mean, we could make a differential play. We could go into the Porygon, assuming that he, that he doesn't want to give me that the differential point. Or, well, assuming that... that um, Assuming that he assumes that I that, that that's not something that I want to play for, but uh, I think I just kind of have to make that play. I mean, if you if you watch this, I'm sorry. I don't you like this, but oh, I I went into the wrong mon. I went into the wrong. I guess it doesn't matter anyway because every indication is, um, Rotom should take a hit, and then and then once Rotom takes a hit, I don't know. Maybe Rotom doesn't take a hit. That's totally totally possible. Yeah, Rotom should always take a hit, and then. And then from there, yeah, I know this thing is Timid Scarf, right? I think he's thinking through whether or not I play for, for the differential point, but I completely misplayed and I, and I, um, and I clicked on Rotom instead, which this is a misplay on my part. There's no excuse for that. Regardless, it does look like plus, uh, like Rotom should always take a hit, and then, and then we should be able to play off of whatever he chooses to scarf into does go for the flamethrower and uh, a foul play should just get us home uh, honestly that crit against the zero aura might have mattered it could have just been a really bad case of me getting lucky I guess I will not ever know but we should be able to call it a day after this uh, foul play here because I don't think flamethrower should ever 3k owe me through left -over. oh it has a 10% chance of 3k uh, after leftovers but yeah foul play just always does it and that's gonna be week number four um yeah like i said I just so many kind of disappointing moments i really don't I, I really think that i had all the tools to kind of make things work but i panicked a lot i like i panicked with the cell steel play and i panicked with the with the sand slash play with the rotom going into the sand slash play and i think it ultimately comes down to just me kind of not feeling all, altogether confident and just kind of me feel me getting easily rattled in these situations but i mean arguably hacks came through for me or uh we're gonna have to see whether or not that crit mattered it does seem pretty likely that it did but um who knows he i do think that he needed a, a fair amount of speed in order to ask me my zygarde but it's just going to be a question of how much hp he invested and yeah i guess it just comes down to a lot in that in how that match ends up but we do have a win. We'll be going up to two and two, and that's going to be week number four. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL. And I would have said more weeks of the ICBA, but the rest of the ICBA season will be canceled. That's very unfortunate, but we will have many, many more things coming in the near future. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.